So recently, SMB Capital released a video titled, Do you have what it takes to be an elite trader? I thought this video was really interesting, but I wanted to give my opinion and also elaborate on some stuff. So without further ado, let's jump right in. What does it take to become elite from elite traders? Revealed three things that elite traders say make them elite from this dinner celebration. The first thing is urgency. Second, competitiveness. And finally, swing the bat hard statistically speaking trading doesn't really work unless you know when to really size up and bet big to have these like outlier wins versus all these small losses that you take along the way so of course i agree with everything you said but i wanted to go deeper into the urgency so we're going to watch a bit more of this clip and then after i'll give my take when we say urgency well how does that relate to you as a trader it means this specifically when you make a trading mistake, you take steps to fix it immediately. So what he said there, I think it's really, really true. So when you make a mistake in trading, it kind of compounds. So you need to fix it really soon. Like sometime if you're able to fix it through the day, it's so important. I mean, it's going to make the difference between you and someone else. Some tools I personally use to really fix mistake is TraderView. So it's just somewhere you can import your trade and look at the statistic behind it. And I like to tag them. So it's a very simple thing. You can YouTube it, but you just import all your trades at the end of the day and then you tag them and you can see clearly where you're losing money. If you don't do this for some reason, it's not that obvious. Like, you know, you're losing money doing something, but you don't see the actual amount. When you do this, what's going to happen is you're going to look overall at a hundred example of a trade and then you're going to see the dollar amount like minus 10,000, minus 15,000 and you're going to be like them. That's a lot of money. But overall, it was only like minus 200, minus 300, minus 400 on like every other day. But when you really add all these stats, you realize that it's such a big amount. Just trying to fix it by saying, oh, tomorrow I'm going to do something else or tomorrow I'm going to stop doing this. It's not enough. You really need to import your trades. You do the work that makes you better every day, every day. You race to consistently profitable. You get there as soon as you can. You race to 100,000 in that p &L. You can't really race to consistency. You just need to do the steps, which is track your trade, trade well, you know, and be better, talk with other traders. And over a long enough period of time, then you will have your edge, which is going to make you profitable. So you can't race to profitably a race to a hundred K. This is kind of a gambling mentality. So I thought this was kind of odd. You actually don't want to do this. You want to just follow the process and when things happen are going to happen. So put yourself in front of a good opportunity by doing the work. So trying to race to something. I mean, for me, when I try to push um, to get to a certain PL number very quickly, it just does the exact opposite. And I'm not the only one doing that. Most people that I talked about, it's always the same thing when we're trying to get to a certain level, like 200K, 300K, everything what happened is you get to 298. And next thing you know, a couple of days later, you're at 275 and you're like, God damn. So it's just like, just do the step and it's going to happen. By the way, if you enjoyed the video so far, don't forget to like, subscribe. I also did link all the best tools for day trading and investing in the description. Don't forget to check that out. Let's get back to the video. What does competitiveness look like for a trader. All right, Mike, you told me that it's important to be competitive. What, what does that mean, though? It means you strive to be number one at your firm. This was certainly Shark's North Star. And Shark is somebody who has made you know, near 20 million in multiple years, having another fabulous year this year. You're probably the top trader at the firm or, or, or close. That was his North Star. I remember talking to him 10, 12 years ago, when he started to have some success, it wasn't about money for him. He wanted to be number one at the firm. He wanted to be number one at the firm for the month. He wanted to be number one at the firm for the year. After a good month, you know, he'd, he'd whisper, you know, what, what do I, what do I got to get to, to be number one? Even if you don't trade for a firm, like you go on Twitter or you have a friend, you always want to be the better trader of the group. And I think that's just natural and very natural for anybody that get into trading. Nobody wants to be like the, the worst or the fifth or something like that. Everybody starts saying, if I could only 
make X, I would be happy and all this. But when you get to a certain point and you trade around other people, you always want to make more than them. And it's sometimes um, annoying or very depressing that when you thought you had a really good day, you look at someone else and you each had like double what you made and you're just like them. I thought I had a good day. Now I feel like I had a really shit day. So being competitive is important, but you just can't lose sight of the progress that you are doing. So it might not go at the pace that you want, but you still have to look at what you're achieving along the way. And when you're starting out, it's not always about, you know, making profit because most likely you're going to be losing money. You're making progress, but it's not dollar amounts yet. It's just about talent and seeing more things happen over time. All right, let's move on to swing the bat hard. What do we mean by swing the bat hard? Swing the bat hard like an SMB trader. Mike, what does that mean? This is a mural that sits on the walls at SMB. If you see it, swing the bat hard. This is a key principle of our teaching. Understand what your A plus trades are, and when you see them, put your size on. So this part is the kind of hardest one to really get good at. Uh, when you're starting out, don't swing the bat hard because you have no clue what you're doing. So it's really something for someone that has more experience and know what their A plus is. Normally these setup don't come every day. So it's like once a month or once a couple weeks or something like that. So when they come, yeah, you got to swing hard and kind of have a, I don't care about the risk mentality. How do you win the day? You develop a daily routine to become elite and you get it done. You get it done with intensity and with urgency and with excellence. You do a daily report card. You do a playbook trade after the close. You make sure you put your stats into trader view. You do a highlight reel. You go over an easy money trade. You collaborate with other traders on the desk. You build technology. You do a book of charts. You do a daily journal. You bring your best you to trading sessions mindfulness, exercise, sleep. All right, so that's a pretty big grocery list. Um, I don't think everyone can do everything on that list, especially if you're still having a job or you're not trading full time or you're studying or something like that. This is just too much. So priority should be daily report card and trade review and playbook. Highlight reels is recording your screen and then clipping the trade Surprisingly, it takes so much time. Um, that's what I find I've been editing in the past and all that. So it just takes time. Everything that's below like the collaborate, build technology, book of charts, it's kind of a mix of all the other ones. So in your daily report card, you're technically making your book of charts. In your daily journal, you're already doing it in your daily report card. And then after bring your best to your trading session is just try to sleep well, you know, eat well, exercise and build technology on that list. I mean, most platform have already the technology built, so you don't really need to build it yourself. You can, but you don't really need to. So overall, I quite like these type of video because they're less about like, here's the best strategy and this and that. And it's a bit more nuanced, right? It's opinion based. But I think trading is a lot about opinions, right? What should be right? What should be wrong? And also what is working? What is not working? Or best practices is really the solution to making money in trading. Setups sometimes work, sometimes doesn't. It's really hard to make video about setup or how to trade a certain setup because it always change and there's so many nuances and you can't really make this or express it properly in a video. 